Hey lovelies, thanks for stopping by my channel today. I am excited for today's Build Your Own Palette. This series was started by myself and Kara from Beauty and the Frizz, and we very quickly roped in Kendra Morgan Official on this one, and we've really been enjoying this series because it's really all about using our single eyeshadow. So if you're looking for some inspiration in pulling out some of the shadows in your collection to use, I hope that you enjoy this video. If we haven't met before, my name is Kelly, and I'm a professional hair and makeup artist, and here on my channel, I strive to keep beauty real. Real honest, real relatable, and real fun. So if that sounds like something you'd enjoy, don't forget to click subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos, like more Build Your Own Palette series videos. Now, today's is all about rainy day. That is the theme of today's video. And I think you could, you know, really take this in a couple different areas. And like I always say, I feel like my shadow selections to a point stayed where I was kind of originally envisioning, but as I start going through my collection, it's sort of like it, it pushes itself off to the side. Creative inspiration or just like I find little good sparkly things that I want to use. I don't know what it is, but it always ends up a little different than what I envisioned. But for me, this palette is going to be a good mesh of colors that make me think of a rainy day and the colors that I want to wear on a rainy day. Because for me, if it's blah and dull and dreary out, I tend to want to go for those bright colors. And I have some experience in this because last week it was like rainy and dark all week long. It was disgusting. <laughs> so I definitely pulled out some bright eyeshadows and I sort of got a little bit of inspo from that. And then there's like the dark, the murky, the slightly grungy, you know, the little like grayscale, if you will, that we feel on a rainy day. So I've got a little bit of that too. So why don't I just show you the palette quick? All right, so here is a quick peek at this palette. Like I said, it's a little mix of what makes me think of a rainy day and what I want to wear on a rainy day. And we will get into swatches. We're also going to do a look today. I have to say, I, I just, I love doing this series because it really does make me look at the shadows in my collection. Now, I will be so excited to see what the other girls pick for their palettes. And by the way, I will make sure to have their videos linked down below and anyone else that I know that's kind of hopping in on this series. I love that the series has inspired people to kind of like dig through and start doing their own BYOPs. So if you feel inspired to do this rainy day palette, please make sure to add your video to the community playlist, which I'll have linked down below. If you aren't a content creator and you just want to share your shadows on Instagram, please tag us so we can share them. We love building this community of single shadow lovers who are now becoming single shadow users. Am I right? All right, let's go ahead and get into these swatches. Okay, let's begin with the shadow that started it all. The shadow that I knew that I was going to need in this, and I was really looking for a good yellow and I found it. This is Sydney Grace Lemonade. I mean, this is a, it's a yellow that's almost like so vibrant and rich. It comes off, I don't want to say gold, but it definitely has some like extreme tone to it. I feel like a lot of times yellows can be sort of like sheer or wimpy and this baby is not. She is not at all. So I am going to give us a little swatch right here. If you haven't tried out Sydney Grace shimmers. I mean, like, first of all, uh, welcome to the beauty community, <laughs> or at least the indie beauty community, because you, you're really missing out. And I think that everybody knows how good these are at this point, but the pigmentation, the creaminess, the, the like foiliness. Now this one, I think just because it's so neon and reflective, it's not like the most like shimmy shimmer, but it is very beautiful. Just the pigmentation that is in the shadow is so wonderful. So like I said, like this is definitely a true yellow, yellow. I love it. It's very nice and intense. And if you know me, you will know at this point that like yellow is one of those colors that I wear to like boost my spirits, to make me feel happier. I also think it looks good on me. So I am definitely excited to have this one in this palette. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, on that sort of like hazy rainy day vibe, this is a shade that I knew that I was gonna pull in. I knew I needed a good dusky, slightly smoky, gurple kind of shade. And this is Elysium from Davina Cosmetics. This is a beautiful matte that really like, honestly, it's almost like if you took periwinkle and mixed it with a gray, it definitely has that like blurple undertone. I'm just now realizing that I didn't like live swatch that for you. Technically I did it while I was down, but maybe that's the way I'm going to get the best straight swatches. Even this is kind of crooked. Wow. Anyway, uh, Elysium is a shade. It's a newer one to my collection and I'm really enjoying it. Like, oh, look at that. 
that's just going to be perfect for this and I already think well right here you have like last year's Pantone colors of the year pretty much but I love this combo of like bright and dusky and I think that these are both shades that are perfect to have in this palette so this is kind of like the cornerstone of this palette. Now here is another fun shimmer. This is Little Ghost and I think that this was actually the second shimmer that I picked because again I was looking for something that gives you that slightly like dusky feel but I don't know something like unique and original. I mean now I have so many single shadows in my collection that it's like I'm always trying to pull out something fun to show you guys. This one um, by the way is from Pastel Roses if I did not say that. This is an older shade. I do feel like Pastel Roses has really like upped their game since I did my one order that I did but this is definitely a fun one. It is a little bit more of a like thin texture but I think that the thin texture of this is going to make it you know if you use it with a wet brush you can really build it up but if you use it with a dry brush you could really transform a shade as well and you can see here on my finger this is of course you know just from swatching it's like the dusky grayed out version of like mermaid multi-chrome that's that's what I'm going to call that one all right <laughs> so then we're just going to kind of keep going with this like theme of like the purple and the yellow because here we have Capri. I think I've probably had this one in another palette, but this is of course from Divina Cosmetics. It's just this beautiful creamy yellow shade. Uh, if you are not familiar with Divina Cosmetics mattes, I talk about them a lot. I love them. I think that they're beautiful because they're very buildable, very blendable. They are a softer formula. I would say that they're, I don't want to say dry as in like uncomfortable to wear on the lid or anything like that but they aren't they're very finely milled and they feel silky but they're not creamy if that makes sense so uh, to me this is a great shadow to work with because you can build it up and you don't start out with like too much pigment so I really like that shade uh, that's gonna be a good one just to have I mean you could wear this as a fun like pop on the inner corner you could of course use it as a transition shade and I just felt like it was one that I needed to have in this palette so another matte I tell you what like I usually struggle to <laughs> all I want <laughs> All I want in all my palettes that I make is beautiful, fun shimmers, and I struggle to like find the mattes that I want to hold places because I only get 10 shadows and that's a struggle for me. If you know me, 10 is not a lot in a palette. So I actually have four mattes in here and I was very surprised when I was like picking these out. I'm like, wow, four mattes? That's good job, Kelly. <laughs> so this is another one. This is Eiffel Tower from Sydney Grace. And I just picked this because I think it's going to be a good deepening shade. It's a good... I mean, I would say neutral, but I think it actually leans on the cool side. It's almost like, uh, it's like a slightly taupey brown. And it's just gonna be such a good combo. Like just, just a great one to be able to have with some of these other colors. And you could really like buff this out. Like if you can see out here, maybe I can just like use my finger to blur it out a little bit. You could really do this quite lightly and then just get like a very light, you know, nudie shade as well. So I think that this one has a lot of opportunities. I cannot believe how messy these swatches are looking today. All right, and then to bring a little more fun and sparkle to the party, we have Glam Shop's Blue Hollow. Uh, I don't wear these hollows that much, but the couple times that I have, I get lots of compliments and they, they really are, they really are a showstopper. And this one I thought was nice. You know, the blue color really goes with rainy day, but there's something about the like, the hollow in here that really could almost represent like, raindrops you know just that like textural feel so this one is definitely one I will say I really like to use these over a glitter glue uh, just to avoid creasing because they do have a little bit more of like a emulsified binder in them this is one that you're gonna have to wait to see in the close-up shots because you just can't really see the magic from far away but they are so so beautiful I'll see if I can get a little finger swatch and a little extra one for you so these are so pretty. I think I have four or five of the Glam Shop Hollow shades. They're a lot of fun to play with. Uh, it's just not something that I reach for in my everyday, but for this palette, I just felt like it was perfect. One more matte to add in, and I really wanted something that had some nice warmth, just so that you would really have the option of either drawing in an all warm look, an all cool look, or combine the two. So I really felt like I needed one with a little bit more warmth. And this is Early Bird from Makeup Geek. And 
I was torn. You guys will have to let me know. Um, do you want to see shadows that you can't get anymore? Or are you really wanting to just see the shades that you can shop for nowadays? Like I personally, when I'm watching, I don't necessarily feel like I need to be able to buy the actual shadow because I could probably find something to dupe it out, right? Like I actually feel like I probably have one within my Divina shades that could be closest to this shade. And you know, maybe you have something similar or maybe you are like me and you love makeup geek from the get-go of the brand and you still have some of these and you want some inspiration to use them. So let me know, are you okay with seeing shades that are discontinued or brands that are discontinued? Or do you just want me to stick to what's relevant and available? Let me know in the comments down below if you have an opinion either way, but either way, this is Early Bird from Makeup Geek and she is a beaut. So now, a shade that, uh, to be honest, I think is so wonderful, so gorgeous. It completely like blew up my skirt the first time I tried this on. Uh, this is one of the Glam Shop Marble shadows and this is Scandal and Wow. So if you aren't familiar with the marbles, it is sort of like a flaky yet creamy shadow. And when you first get them, you can really see the marbling between uh, two or more tones in here. So it's a very textured shadow. Um, it just creates something wonderful. So I'm going to try to give you guys a little up close so that you can see that there. So you can probably see the little bit of the flaky texture. These do smooth out really beautifully. You do want to be careful when you apply them because uh, the application process can be a little messy and you don't wanna use too much. But I mean, uh, look at that, fire on my arm. That's all I'm saying. This is another one that I feel like would be a good rainy, look at that, look at that. <laughs> so this is another one that would be really good on a rainy day when you just need a little pep in your step. So I had to pull these out. Uh, I doubt that I will use this one today because I did use it live when I got these shadows and it, it spoke for itself. So I'll make sure to have that video linked up here and then uh, also down in the description box if you do wanna see. Um, I used two of the marble shades, I think, in that video. So um, I did wanna include it in here so you could see it in the swatches, but it's probably one that I won't use today um, just because I wanna use quite a few of these. And since I have already featured that one here on my channel, I, uh, I will probably skip that one. But She's a beauty. The marble shades, I tell you what, they are messy. I keep all of my marble shadows in one palette because the flakes kind of like keep keep flaking. <laughs> so I just kind of keep them contained with each other and uh, don't let them contaminate my other shadows. But you know, sometimes beauty is a pain in the ass and that's <laughs> one of these situations. All right, so the next shade in our little collection here is one that I'm not sure if I've use the shadow or not yet. This is Alpine from Cleona. This is one of their circle pans, their round pans. And this is one that uh, I wanted to bring in some of the little bits of color from the next shadow that we're gonna be using. But I also, again, just wanted something like a little bit of a pop of color that wasn't in the purple or the yellow range. This is one that, I mean, I think you get that aquatic feel of a rainy day, but you get the brightness that I wanna see on a rainy day. So it was a perfect one, in my opinion, to add to this palette. And here she is. I mean, these Cleona round pans, I tell you what, if you are shopping and you're picking up some stained glass shadows and you have a few extra dollars, please don't miss out on the round pans, the circle shadows whatever they're called. Don't miss out on them, they're great. Uh, they are not usually, sometimes some of them are duochrome. There really aren't any multi-chromes, but they are just so creamy and beautiful and really a good price. So I think that they're a little bit of an unsung hero. All right, this last one speaks for itself. It already has quite the, uh, quite the fan group going on. And this is Fairy Fire from Davina. This is one of the releases from, I guess I would say Fall and Winter. This is a beautiful, transparent, iridescent shade. I mean, oh, this shade is so, so pretty. You know me, I need to have something that I can have a beautiful, bright, fun inner corner and Fairy Fire is the way to get it. Oh, I mean, this shadow is so shifty, so beautiful. I'm gonna just, I'm just dipping down to be able to see in my mirror, by the way, so that I don't like land these right on top of each other. I'm gonna get a little bit more. It was a bit of a weak swatch. I feel sad that Fairy Fire is getting the pinky <laughs> because the pinky doesn't always do so good. 
All right, so here, and definitely when we zoom in, you'll be able to see. So here you can see almost that like pinky purple into that like green, which is why I wanted to pull in this like aquatic, really yummy green blue shade. And I mean, oh, it's just so pretty. I know a lot of people wear this one over black. Uh, I actually did it over white and it was gorgeous. And I think that it could really be transformative with really any of these shades. So that is my rainy day palette. I can't wait to use this one, but first I'm gonna give you guys an up close look. All I know is that I want to showcase some of the bright and some of the murky. That's literally as far as I got with this. So I'm just gonna be playing a little bit. You'll also, by the way, have to let me know, other than like the whole like, do you wanna see shadows that are discontinued thing, you'll have to let me know, what do you prefer in these videos? Do you like it when I just like, mostly talk about the shadows and then just like do a sped through tutorial or do you like it where it's more of like a talk through? I feel like for time's sake, I've been doing sped up tutorials recently. Uh, maybe this one I'll do is a little like mini talk through. I'm not gonna get too chatty. I'm not gonna get too chatty, but you'll have to let me know which you prefer down below. Uh, I'm gonna try not to do too many hair flips, but I just washed my hair this morning and let it dry. This is totally the epitome of my rainy day hair, by the way. I just like usually let it go naturally, but uh, if I if I pull it back, it's gonna get a super weird like flat spot, and then the rest of it will stay poofy. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna try not to do too much hair flipping. It can get super annoying, I know. So let's go ahead and begin. All right, so I think I'm just gonna start out with my lid shades and then build up into the crease. I don't need anything like too cut, too sharp, too crazy, but this way I can like really kind of go from like I think I want to do sunny and bright into you know more of the like depth on the outside. Uh, I did not put on concealer. I have the rest of my face makeup done, obviously. I will have it all linked down below, but concealer is the one thing I skipped. In case I do get a little bit of fallout, I will hopefully be able to clean that up, fingers crossed. All right, so you had to know I was gonna use Lemonade. I have to use the shade that started it all. We're gonna use the yellow on our inner corner. Do I want to use a primer? Eh, I think we'll be okay. I do plan on doing a video later with Jeremy. I think we're gonna do our scent review for the Eccentric Molecules set that I got. Uh, I asked on Instagram if you guys wanted to see just me do it or if you wanted Jeremy to chime in again like he did for the commodity one. And it was a resounding, I think it was like 92% uh, with Jeremy. It was something like a lot. So uh, that's gonna be what we're gonna do. <laughs> okay, I did put Fix Plus on my brush, but like, what? What? Wow, I have not, I think I used this one like twice maybe. I've been kind of forgetting some of my Sydney Gray stuff just because it's in like a big mama palette and so it's a little harder to get out, but I need to go back to using these because I used them a couple times last week and then now with this one, I'm like, wow, wowie wow. Oh, it's like electric and beautiful. All right, now I'm moving into that Alpine shade. By the way, uh, both for Lemonade and for this one, I'm using the Wayne Goss 18 brush. This has always, since <laughs> since its launch, uh, it's been my favorite, favorite, favorite brush for shimmers. Uh, you can't get it anymore, which just makes me so sad. But I'm obviously, I will blend this out, but I'm just kind of like laying the color right now to place it. And then I'm just gonna take the other side of this brush and just kind of like shimmy the two together a little bit. All right, so now I'm just taking the uh, pastel roses shade, the little ghost, and I'm using a silicone applicator. I don't actually think I needed to do that, but I was worried that it wasn't gonna pick up very well. I'll probably end up pulling in that Wayne Goss brush in just a second. Yeah, this works just fine. I could have used this to layer over the top of that Alpine shade, but I just wanted to play with it on its own. I will say, I am glad that I, uh, <laughs> that I did not put on concealer because I'm getting a little bit of fallout, which is, you know, to be understood, uh, obviously, but ugh, we're gonna have a little cleanup to do. What's this? This is my rainy day palette. I like that blue. Top of the blue. This one? Yeah. I like you, baby. Got a little bit of fallout. Yeah, I'll, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix it. Did you just hear me said, you got a little bit of fallout. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, yes, we have, we have a good bit of fallout. I'm not worried about that. I'm just gonna keep going on. So 
now, okay, okay, okay. See, this is why I like to do my lid first and then I can add in my mats because the mats for me are what makes the shape, you know, like it's what really builds everything up. So now we're gonna take that Elysium shade. Let's take that on a Sonia G Crease Pro and I'm just gonna build up this outer corner. See, this is why I always say that I like the Divina mattes because they are so buildable and you can get a ton of pigment out of them, but you know, you don't get that like hard stop, like creamy oversaturatedness sometimes. You, if anybody knows what I'm talking about, leave me a thumbs up down below. <laughs> okay, so just taking a clean A507 from BK Beauty and blending this out a little further. Like, I really don't wanna go a little further out, but I wanna blend it out further. It already it already went out more than, more than far enough, but I just want it to kinda of like go into a whisper. Okay, I will end up cleaning all this up and evening these out once we get to that point, but now I'm just gonna take a pencil brush and I'm gonna run into Capri, that creamy yellow, and I'm just going to like blur out this edge here. All right, I'm back, I'm feeling fresh. <laughs> I feel much better without four colors of fallout on my face. I don't know why I do that. I just, I just like coming on camera every once in a while with a little bit of my makeup done before we get the eyes started. I mean, there are lots of times where you all see me naked face, so it's not like I'm ashamed to show my naked face, but sometimes it's just nice to start out a look with kind of like the complexion to know sort of the vibe you're going for. I don't know, but anyway. It was just a little bit of a cleanup, not a big deal. So now I'm trying to decide if I want to lay Capri down. I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna lay Capri down and then put Fairy Fire over the top of it. So just to like give a little bit of base. I mean, I think that this could be just a, a beautiful look. I would probably do a little bit under the lash line, which I'm going to, but just a little bit like this, you wouldn't even have to do like a, a really bam inner corner because these shades are just so vibrant and beautiful themselves, but of course we are going to. So we're gonna take Fairy Fire and lay that right over the top. Mm, it's so pretty. Yeah, like laying that yellow down really helped pop out the green shift that's in this one. Oh. Freaking phenomenal. And by the way, this is not a wet brush. This is a dry brush. I'm, I'm really finding that I prefer to use a dry brush, maybe a little bit of like a glitter glue or a primer of some sort, but with these iridescent shades, I like to use something that isn't overly wet because then sometimes it can, it can make the shadow look kind of like milky in a weird way. I think I've talked about this before. I've probably talked about this before, but Oh my gosh, okay, I just keep like loading this on. I was just gonna do like the tiniest bit and then I just keep like adding it and adding it. That is, that's incredible. Okay, so now I have to decide if I want to use Early Bird on the lower lash line or Eiffel Tower. You know, Early Bird, Early Bird would make it more like tropical fun, but I feel like Eiffel Tower gives it a little bit, a little bit more like depth and like grounding. So I think we're gonna do that both would be gorgeous. So I'm just gonna really quickly go ahead and whack on some Eiffel Tower. Okay, well, this is by no means a subtle look. And I know, I feel like last month's BYOP, I purposely did a like low key look, like something a little bit more calm. This I love, but it's definitely a lot. I feel like you could, you could tighten it up, like not have quite such an expanded shape. For me, Okay, here's the reason why I have a problem with just 10 shades. I would like a shade that is in this shade range that's just a little bit lighter to like blur this out just a little bit more, but that's just that's just my Virgo tendencies and I have to let go, I have to let go. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and throw on some mascara. I thought about doing lashes, we'll see how I feel and I'm gonna pick out a lip, I'll be back. Okay, so here we have the finished look I have done lashes. I have put lashes on. It's been a hot minute. And these aren't 
like my lashes lashes. These are lashes with regular lash adhesive. I pull out the good old House of Lashes lash glue. So I will spend the next two days trying to get this off of my eyeballs, <laughs> but it was worth it. I did just feel like this look just needed a little extra pop and I really like it. Uh, for my lip, I did the Lisa Eldridge uh, Luxuriously Lucent Lipstick in Dance Card. It's this beautiful like peachy moment, corally moment, but since it's sheer enough, I when I'm wearing a very dramatic eye look, I like to do something a little more understated on the lips. So I didn't do a lip liner. It's just a wash of color, something to make my lips look hydrated and give them a little pop. So all the rest of the makeup, of course, will be listed down below. I really like this look. I definitely, I would definitely wear this like any day, every day, love it. Uh, I do think that it's going to be a mood booster on those rainy days, but I just wanted to give you guys an up close look before we finish up. Like I said, I am here for this. I feel like this is a great combination of shades to like give you that bright pop when you need it, but also if you wanna cozy on in, if you wanna settle into those like sultry sort of smoky vibes, you could definitely do that with these shades too. Again, if you are someone that would like to create a rainy day palette, I would love to see what your vision is. Please don't forget to tag me on Instagram or upload your video to the community playlist linked down below. Thank you to Kendra and to Kara. I cannot wait to see what they pick out. So make sure that you head over to their channels as well so you can see what they pick. And if you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to give it a like. It really does help me out here on my channel. If you are interested in a little heads up on what's coming next month, <laughs> So this is one that I think I could probably have like a 40 pan palette on. I would never do that because that's a little ridiculous, but we are going to do an eyeshadow palette featuring shades we have never used. Yep. Talking about the shades that, I mean, maybe we've swatched, but I think I, I might even have shades that I haven't even swatched. Oh, I don't know. I feel like when I get shades, I have to touch them at least once, but we're going to be using the shades that we've never used before. I'm excited for that one. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on that one. And I will see you really soon.